Texture painting in Blender still has a lot to be desired, but I've recently developed a new workflow for texture painting in Blender that I want to share with you guys, and I think it yields awesome results. All right, so first off, we need something to texture paint, and for that, I will bring in my T-Rex from my previous video on sculpting dinosaurs in Blender. This is a kind of continuation of that video, so check that one out if that interests you. For the method we will be using, we will need some good UVs so we can bake textures later on. Luckily, our model has nice topology, so unwrapping and cutting seams should be pretty straightforward. We will open the UV editor and head into edit mode on our model. I will start off by creating a seam down the middle by right-clicking in edge mode and select mark seam. If you need to mark seams on both sides of the model, then you could have a model with a mirror modifier on it, and then when you apply the modifier, it just works. However, my model is already finished, so that won't work. Instead, what we can do is head over to the tools menu, turn on topology mirror, and now when you select an edge loop, you can go to select and hit select mirror, and boom, the selection has been mirrored. The hotkey for this is control shift M, by the way. I will continue to mark seams where it would be nice to have them for my unwrapping, around and along limbs, around the mouth and head as well. When we're done marking our seams, we can hit U and unwrap our model, and then we can correct whatever we missed based on these islands. And then we can just unwrap again. Next up, let's make sure to lay out some nice UVs on the left. This will make the texture baking much nicer and is very good for games. We could use UDIMs here, but I don't need that much detail and I'm more interested in potentially using this as a game model. All right, looks great. Now, when making the T-Rex, I created a side view color sketch, and in a way, it would be great to reuse those colors somehow on our model. Luckily, there's a really cool technique that I've been playing around with that works really well. Let's head over and create a new UV set on our model. Hit U and select project from view from the side. This way we get completely flat UVs. Then we can open up the T-Rex image sketch color and line up our new UVs to match the T-Rex concept. Neat. With that done, we can open the shader editor and create a new material, create an image texture node and open the T-Rex color in it. And it doesn't look quite right yet because the image texture is currently using the wrong UV set. To fix this, we will create a UV map node. On this node, we can select the UV map we created for the side view. And now it all lines up and it already looks kind of good. We do have some spots missing here and there, so we want to paint those out somehow. Now, a simple method to do this would be using Blender's texture painting feature, but it's not that performant and I have a way I like much more, and that is using Blender's new sculpt vertex colors instead. But firstly, we'll need to convert these textures into vertex colors, and I currently have a multi-resolution modifier on our model, so I'll need to apply that at the highest resolution first. Not to worry, we will bring back the low-res model later, but for now, let's convert the colors. To do this, we will turn on dynamic paint on our model and add a new canvas and create a new vertex color slot on our model. We will just call ours base color. Then on our canvas, we will select the set as our paint map layer. Then we will create a new texture on our object and select the side color image. Back on the canvas, go to the initial color, set it to UV texture and select the texture we just created and the side UV map. And now if you simply apply the dynamic paint, the texture will be baked to the vertex colors, which we can see in the viewport shading. Just remember to turn on vertex and shading and adjust the matte cap to something bright and white. But we want to use these with the sculpt vertex colors and currently they're just vertex colors. So we will need to head to preferences and turn on sculpt vertex colors. Important note here is that you need Blender 3.00 to use this feature, so keep that in mind. With this turned on, the vertex colors are now gone, but we can bring them back by heading into sculpt mode and hitting load sculpt vertex colors, and boom, we now have our textures ready to paint on in sculpt mode, wonderful. Then we can go ahead and fix up the textures here and there. Also remember that the resolution of your paint now depends on the density of your mesh. But I think this method is really nice because you can do a lot of the work much faster in Photoshop and then just transfer it to Blender later. Also, now we can use the sculpt to guide our painting, like coloring in the scales. Ooh, this is already looking awesome. If you want to sample the colors from your model, you can simply hit S and it will sample the color where the cursor is. I'm also going to color the teeth, but I will do this the old fashioned way by doing a quick smart UV unwrapping, jump into texture painting mode, go to the texture slots and create a new base color. Now we can start painting the teeth and claws. Boom. Now that we're done making our vertex colors, we can convert them into a proper texture using baking. Make sure your vertex colors are plugged into the base color of your model. 
create an image texture node and create a new image texture. And we can also give it the proper UVs to use. Now we can bake the model's colors. Make sure you're in cycles and head over to bake. Set it to diffuse and take off color only. Now the base color of the principal node will be output to whatever image texture node is currently selected. Hit bake, wait, and boom. Awesome, we got textures fitting our UVs now. Okay, let's improve our textures a bit. What you could do here is jump back into sculpt mode, create a new sculpt vertex color slot, darken it using the filter tool, and paint in a mask for areas with big scales. Then back in the shader editor, we can make bumpy scales using a Voronoi node, and then use the mask we just created to define where it should be. Neat. I also created a mask to separate smaller scales from bigger scales, just to have some variation. Using masks like these is by far my favorite method of getting good results fast. And it's a lot more flexible, because you can always go back and change the mask. To add some realism, I gave the T-Rex some scratches as well, using a scratch map set to box and a texture coordinate node set to object. And then you can just go through all the different maps like roughness, bump and so on in the bake options to create textures like we did with the color. But our mesh is still super high poly. Not to worry, we can bring it back. Attach a multi-resolution modifier to it again and hit unsubdivide a couple of times. And then we get the original retopologized mesh back. Amazing! And the textures still work like a charm. And now that you have a multi-resolution modifier on it, you can also bake awesome normal maps and displacement maps. New texture, bake from multi-res, bake, boom, awesome normal maps, yay! I also went through the trouble of rigging the T-Rex so I could create a more interesting pose, which looks great with the new textures. And here we pretty much have the final result, and I'm really happy with our T-Rex so far. If you wish to learn more and see the full creation process of the T-Rex, including sculpting, texturing, rigging, and much more, check out the creating dinosaurs and blender process over on Gumroad. Or if you wish to get access to the T-Rex model itself, fully textured and rigged, ready for games and films, you can check that out as well over on Gumroad. Well, that's pretty much it for now. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.